Hey, this is John Levin from Dokken, and here we are. We go to 11. Uh, Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These go to 11. Like a, host- like a, like a hostage video. I, I'm, I'm kind of sensitive to light. I got hit in the head with a hammer, believe it or not, earlier in the week doing some home oh, improvement. So, no way. uh, so I'm trying to, I picked a different room and the lighting isn't as great, but at least I get to talk to you. I've been well, wanting to talk to you for a bit. So John, yeah. Duncan has his new record. And I try yeah. to think back to the last time I saw you performing with Dawkin, and I it must have been back in 08. So it's been a while, but you know, as you get older, time seems to kind of shrink, but it's really been a long time. But uh, that was an excellent record in the sense that it brought back that traditional Dawkin kind of sound. Um, with the new record, Heaven Comes Down, again, there's a link to that lyric for that particular song there's something different about this record musically in the sense of the guitar. Um, It's almost like you put your own stamp on this. It, it, you know, I think in the past I almost kind of go, well, I could kind of see that, that he's going for a Lynch type vibe, maybe because that's what fans expected. This is a little (laughs) different. I don't know. I don't know if you would agree or if I'm totally off base. Uh, No, agree. Agree. Um, I think that, you know, with me, first of all, let me back up by saying, you know, I was a huge Eddie Van Halen, Michael Mm -hmm. Shanker, George Lynch. uh, Those are my, you know, influences growing up. So I certainly influenced there. And um, that carried through into when I first joined the band, obviously, and and playing these songs on stage. You know, I, I wanted to keep true to what George did. Like, for example, like when I saw Zach play with Ozzy, you know, very Mm -hmm. early on, we toured to, we, so with them when I was in Warlock in like 1989, right. we opened. And and what I liked about it, I was like, wow, you know, he plays all of the Randy Road solos note for the, the right way. And then on other things, he takes his, you know, so mm-hmm. I didn't want to adulterate that. But in terms of how it transcended on to the, to the albums, I think you're right. There's a progression in, in any, in anything with music, musicians and, and has how you, how you play. Every moment is, every record is like, as a document in time. So you can look back and say, oh, well, this is how I played then, you know, right from the get-go. Like, look, this is how I played in the Warlock thing in 88. This is how mm-hmm. I played on Lightning Strikes Again, whatever. Uh, but so I think it's a natural progression. And on this one, I just felt like, um, first of all, the, the mental space was different. It was mm-hmm. COVID. I'm working here in my studio and I had the luxury of time because I have my own studio, whereas a lot of those earlier records in the past, um, we were in a, a studio that we're, we're paying hourly and Don's like, okay, play a lead, but you know, you got 20 minutes, blow, mm-hmm. you know, it's not like I, ha- I had to just blow something out on a lot right. of those leads. Right. It wasn't like, I didn't have the luxury of like, okay, I can relax and just do whatever I want to do here, you know? Right. Right. So on this one, I, I just approached it differently. Like um, number one, I, I feel like, I just wanted to do whatever it is I was going to do with mm-hmm. not, not, I didn't have any preconceptions of how I was going to play. I just was just play. Right. And I, and on given solo, I would go into my studio. If I felt like playing, I'd pull up a track, say to gypsy, right. Mm-hmm. I, it felt good. Okay. Five, six, seven solos. And I wouldn't listen to them huh. another day. All right. Let me throw in a couple more leads down there. So I, I would amass 15, 20, 25 oh, leads wow. for each song. Okay. Yeah. And right. And then at some point I had to go through, through all of those and mm-hmm. see what what was what oh, but that's how i approached it one and so i definitely agree with you is you know it's there was a, a, pr- a pr- progression to get right. me to where i am today right i added curiosity because i mean if you have like you know like you said up to 15 solos at times how hard is it to kind of replicate that when you go that's the one and then you have to go back in and, and learn well, no, it. That didn't replicate any of it Oh, I, I chose that. But I mean, I, what I'm saying is if you add that oh, yeah. into the into the into the set, let's yeah. say, you know, I don't know how many tunes you guys are adding into the set. I know a, a lot of times, uh, you know, it's all bands, not just 80s legacy acts and stuff like that. They 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 find it hard to sneak in a new tune just because of the fact that, you know, fans want to hear what they want to hear. Um, but 
if for yourself, how hard would it be to replicate something like that? Thinking back now okay. going, hey, that was the solo. That's what made the cut. Yeah. And now I have to insert that into the set list. And now I have to learn the thing. Well, that's a good question. Like, you know, the record was done a year ago. So I, those solos were moments in time. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? They were right. moments in time. So it, whatever ends up being the stamp that gets onto the record now becomes the indelible thing that it is, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we we go to video for um, Fugitive. I'm like, oh crap, man! I got to go learn right. this, man. Sure. You know? and, and, and almost like learning a third party's work because mm -hmm. I don't know what I did. I, I had to go back, try right. and relearn it. You know? Sure. I think sure. I'm right. <laughs> That's crazy. But moment in time. I know, I know you guys have like three tunes that you've done video, one official video, and then a couple different videos, animated video, and then another video. Uh, out of the three tunes, I mean, are any of those in the set at the present time, or do you plan to kind of inject those into the set? Because I know, uh, you know, you guys have gotten good reviews, you've gotten mixed reviews, but either way, reviews are reviews, and you guys want to promote the record, obviously. Yeah. We're planning on doing Gypsy and Fugitive for now. Um, I would hope there's going to be more. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, these songs are, are a good depiction of what the band is now, you know, mm -hmm. and, and fans are embracing the music as fitting in with the uh, the, the Dokken catalog, you know. Right. One thing we've, we've really like in the past, like, you know, let me say, like when you're when you're writing an album, it's very difficult to say, oh, we're going to do this, this and this. And, you, you know, you got to just do and and at the end it sort of is what it is but fortunately this record just really feels like it fits with the the a continuation say of the, mm -hmm. of the doc and that people want to hear right right and i think uh, one of the words that's been thrown out for this particular record is mature and i think the last time i heard that was on the dysfunctional record if, if i mean i'm sure you're familiar with that record but uh it's part of the legacy but you can kind of see that right you can kind of see where the fans are maybe making that comparison to a certain extent uh, i think that's a good comparison like you know look we're all we all grow over time as people and, and hopefully right mm -hmm. and as um as musicians it's the same thing you know music just conveys an emotion right so you you sort of can't be conveying the same exact thing over and over with any um genuineness you know mm -hmm. it, thing, things progress right. and that's what where we progress to at this point and i i think i agree with you it, it is a mature maybe a more mature sound but still a sound that fits and feels right for the camp mm -hmm. yeah out of curiosity, you know, how long, I mean, I know you've been in the band for since, Is has it been 03? Oh, oh, 03 was the official announcement. Official. Now, how did you, how did you get to meet Don? How, how, how'd you get introduced to him? What's the story behind that? I don't remember ever hearing or reading about it, but you, you're in the band. Oh, yeah. Uh, are you talking about the, the first time I got in the band or the first time I Yeah, because met? I think what I do recall is I think you were brought in and did some recording on like a bonus yeah. cut or something, something like that, yeah. right? Right? Yeah, it was it was 98 and uh, I, I was friends at that time with Jeff Pilsen. We still are friends. He's a wonderful mm -hmm. guy. Um, and we, we met through a mutual friend, my friend Tommy Henriksen. And Tommy and Jeff were in a band together called War and mm -hmm. Peace. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think Tommy might have even been living in Jeff's house during that time. I don't remember. Um, but I briefly met Don on the sidewalk walking from uh, later. Tommy moved into his own house and we ran into Don. But that's, you know, just for two seconds. I don't know that he would remember that. And I'm not sure if that was before or after. Mm -hmm. Probably before. Right. But anyway, so one day Jeff calls me, calls, leaves a message on my office voicemail asking if I can come play for some play some songs, play some solos. He said our guitar player quit. But I didn't know he meant George Lynch. I thought it was for Doc. Oh, I just right, didn't. Right solo thing i hadn't heard about docking at that point in years i thought they broke up frankly mm -hmm. you know um and then you know my dad pushed me into going down there because i hadn't played guitar at that point for years i went to law school mm -hmm. i had short hair i was in boot that day mm -hmm. and um dad pushed me into going like that i haven't touched the guitar in for years i mean this was like 98 i hadn't really played much since 93 when i started law school and just like every once in a while i'd pick up the guitar and you know play for a few minutes uh, my dad pushed me into it. I went down there and played some solos. Um, I remember the studio door open. Don had a red Les Paul mm. and he 
He said, here, play. And I, and he just wanted me to blow it out. I mean, he didn't really even want me to hear the track. He's like, I'm like, can I hear it? He's like, no, oh. just play. Oh, wow. <laughs> so like, what key is it in? Yeah. Hey, just play. I'm like, okay. So, you know, they popped it on and I, I played two solos that night. And I guess they, they must have liked it because one got released as mm -hmm. a track in Japan. Right. I would right. have meant for the Erase the Slate record. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, well, the other one was like a demo of Mattis Tatter. But then a few weeks after that, Jeff called me and said, hey, we're headlining the Dallas Starplex. Can you learn all this, all the songs in the set and do this with us? So, yeah. And I said, yeah, yeah, let's do it. I think he said so to me, how do you do on the press? I'm like, good. <laughs> so how hard was that because like you just said yourself i mean at that point you were you were all in on on law school right and you were you're, it was your dad i guess that 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 said hey you got to do this so now you do this the couple solos and then you get they come back with hey can you learn the set and you're like what how, how hard was that how long did it take you to learn uh, that set i don't you know i remember jeff coming to my house alone and and us playing together with like some practice amps mm -hmm. and showed me a few he said okay here's how you play this and I, I, there was no songs that i had well for the most part i had been familiar with all the songs in that right. set it's right. he like i to fly i don't think I'd, sure. I'd heard that right all the other ones i knew as a kid being a docking fan they were mm -hmm. popular so I, I didn't necessarily know how to play them right but i you know and the first the first part as a musician to being able to play a song is you have to, if you know it, you're a step ahead of the game, you know. Sure. But, um, Jeff came over, we rehearsed a little bit together, then we rehearsed in Don's studio as a band, the four mm -hmm. of us. With Don. Um, yeah, and then we played a tune-up gig for Don's birthday. He, Don owned a club that was June 29th, 98. Oh, okay. We, yeah, we did a show in Don's club, which I mm -hmm. almost missed. Find oh, it. Yeah, it's for real. Oh, wow. It's a whole lot. And then we did that, and then we did the Starplex. And then, uh, you know, they rightfully took Reb Beach in the band because, so let's be honest, they had a management. You're going to mm -hmm. go to your management. You take uh, Don, Don, this lawyer friend of Jeff's or uh, right. Reb Beach. Right. I mean, the lawyer management was like, Don, you, you don't, come on, man. Why, why are you even asking me this? You're yeah. going to put the lawyer, friend's lawyer, Jeff's lawyer in the band. Yeah. Come on. But, but was that a, a disappointing at all? I mean, to a certain extent, it might have been, right? I mean, I would think. You know? No, no, not at all. No, I had no, I had no preconceived notion of actually joining. I had my own law practice. I was thinking, yeah, I'll do a couple shows. This will be mm -hmm. fun. Well, you know, I, I had no expectation of joining. And frankly, had he asked me to join at the time, I don't know that I would have been able to say yes because okay. I had, you know, I had a record label, sure, at the time, or the partner, and okay. um, I probably tell the partner, hey, you know, I'm joining Doc and can't do the label thing anymore. We had, sure. we had band major record companies you know mm. so in, other, in that. other commitments then huh yeah. yeah commitments i mean had he i mean i was knowing me i was probably nervous that he might have asked me because then i oh. i would prob probably recognize that at that time i might not have been re realistically even able to do it sure but between then in 2003 i did some fill-in dates for them mm -hmm. you know like maybe a dozen shows i did i remember we went to florida and did some there maybe that was 2002 I did a whole, maybe a dozen shows, just, you know, Don would say to me, hey, we have a show, I can't have no guitar, but, you know, it, it, it was like that. Right. Um, but then in 2003, one day, Don called me, 2003, by the way, at that point, my record label was done. Mm. Um, I don't remember when Napster hit, but it must have been around there, because that's what right. killed killed us, anyway, okay. really. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, but, so once that happened, it was just, the timing was different. All of a sudden, Don called me, asking me if I could come out to Vegas, Um and I had a feeling that he's doing that because he's maybe thinking of doing a change. You know, I had a feeling, well, I wonder why he's flying me up there. He maybe he's thinking he's, he, he doesn't, he's not, he wants to change guitar players. So sure enough, I watched the show. He comes back to the hotel afterwards. He said, Hey, I'm thinking of doing a guitar change. Could, right. Would you do, put you in the band? A, could you do it? Do you have mm -hmm. the time to do it? And at that time, you know, it, things aligned because I didn't have the label anymore. I was just doing entertainment law right. and the technology advanced to the point that all i needed to work was a phone and a laptop and i remember in the beginning man we, we were tour i'd have an office in the back of the bus right and they had a little modem device you can connect oh. your yourself to that sure. would allow me at you know internet it was right. very primitive it was right. like some new and software you put right. on and you can 
plug in, it would plug your cell phone into your laptop and mm -hmm. you can get very slowly, you can get email. So, and I worked like that for years. Mm. Oh man. So one of the things that I know Don has mentioned is that this is the last docking record, but I, I find that hard to believe. Cause I think, you know, if he's going to keep getting offers to, to, to do shows, you know, there's bound to be a label or if not this, your current label to say, we need another record. It's going to be interesting how that would happen. Cause I know he's, he's had his fair share of health issues, but I'm guessing it could be done. Don't you think? I mean, if Jason Becker can record, I think Don can record. Um, wow, that's such a lot to think about. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me unwrap it one second. Okay. Um, first, let me say that, you know, we after our last two records, we on both those, we both said that was the last one. I know Don. And, mm -hmm. and I, oh, I'm sort of eager to agree that this should be the last one, whatever was the case, mm -hmm. whether, you know, after life. Because after like, I felt like, okay, we got a good record here. You, you know, you're always thinking in your head, we're, maybe we're getting older. Can we do this again? Mm -hmm. We're all, we all have our injuries and, sure. you know, it goes like things don't get easier as you get older, right. you know, let's right. be honest. So right. that, that said, it's like, we have a, so we have had a tendency to always say that if this, if it turned out that this would be the last one, I, I'd actually feel really good about that on, on the one hand. Mm. What I mean by that, I'd be feeling like, we went out with something that we could be proud of and the fans mm -hmm. loved. Right. So I'd rather have it like that than, than do another one and not succeed, you know? That that's like the fear. If we do right. another one, can we do another one this good? Mm. And even if we, you know, look, we could think it's amazing, but you don't know how the how the fans are going to react. And that's sure. all that matters. We great. And they may be like, nah, we don't like this one. Mm -hmm. You know, who knows? Right. So if right. it turns the last one i i go out proud right and if it turns out we, another one, we better deliver something as good true it how surreal was it for you to share the stage with lynch because i know you guys have done some shows you know don has brought him on as special guest and mm -hmm. uh, you know here he is you know and you're sitting there watching him uh, I, I don't know if you've actually performed with him on stage at the same time or whether you step aside, but either way, it's got to be surreal to be going, wow, there's the guy. Yeah, well, here's the thing what people maybe not don't realize. Um, we we did this. the first, I met George for the first time in the dressing room at Loud Park we, in 2010 in Japan. Mm, okay. And he up and played with us and we played together on that, that okay. show video footage of it i'm not an oh, internet wow. troll i don't right right uh, that was the first time we met like um so th th this particular run with george playing with us at the end that wasn't the first time we've done this i okay. think then we did it again. around 2011 um we did some shows with lynch mob and and we would jam at the end of it george and i did mm. you know and fast forward 10 years or however many years mm -hmm. um i think this we started doing this again it was before covid it was like eight it was like maybe 19 or 18 it was probably 19 um we started doing shows again and we got disrupted by the covid thing but um yeah I, first of all i think it's wonderful for the fans mm -hmm. Be, you know and that should really be the most important thing right it's it, it's really about them it was wonderful right. for me too because i was sure. watching it and it was right here at george i'm in with friends and it's you know it's all cool um so it's sort of like a win-win i i would understand that it would be weird for i mean from george's perspective i'd be like wow this is weird i gotta sit and listen to these other guys playing songs i wrote you know mm -hmm. i can understand that i don't know how i would feel about that sure. i'd be like oh man no i understand that and and i think we've even talked about that and i said hey george think about how it is for me i gotta play your songs right. in front of you yeah. having you come up like you want to switch positions <laughs> so sure. we, we had right. to up you know but but overall, I think, you know, win-win. Yeah. You know, fans love it. Great for, for I, I loved having, getting to listen to him. And, you know, and I, I obviously I would imagine he liked doing it too. Or So it's all yeah. good, right? Right. Yeah. What what's a what's a deep cut that you'd like to insert into the set? Be it something from your your tenure in the band or or something classic. What's something that you'd go, hey, I'd really love to hear that in the set? Well, I really love to hear songs, more songs off 
the newest release like could we do like whatever maybe maybe like a deep cut would be like saving grace mm. okay you know yeah that you know we shot the four four more videos i think i mentioned oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. yeah so now there's going to be seven videos for this record and when we were shooting those four one of them was like sit we did like saving grace like a rose you know there's four more but mm -hmm. my long story short is like hearing those songs and while you're on stage you know doing the video Right. I really felt like, man, these songs really feel like they belong in the catalog. They sort, they all like are taking on a life of their own, you know. And um, for for example, let, let me explain to you what I mean. Like when you finish an album, you hear it so many times. But you know, we finished it like a year ago, and mm. you 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 have a different perception of what it is than than when you hear it after not having heard it for a year. Mm -hmm. You're hearing it with like completely a fresh perspective and fresh ears. You know what I mean? Right. And after all that time goes by, I feel like the songs started taking on a life of their own. Like it's its own thing. Like, you know, that, that, that it became its own part of the catalog for me right. already. You know, mm -hmm. I have a feeling like fans are going to feel that way too. After they sit with this thing for a while, it just feels like, you know, it fits in. So for me, a, a deep track would be say, like say saving grace, mm -hmm. you know, not something made us playing, but something that really felt cool when we were shooting the video for it, you know, or like lost in you. Mm. yeah yeah i i was gonna ask the the as far as things go i know way back when uh lightning strikes again there was a european uh bonus cut um what was it called a sunset superstar right barely remember it but <laughs> barely remember. but but yeah. it's interesting because on the for the next record it, it kind of somewhat resurfaced as empire it's almost like you guys reworked it uh yeah i, no. I tell you one thing okay a super this i remember there was i think i used a wawa pedal on that mm. solo yep. which is right and and, uh, and i'm not really real good at the wah and mm. I, I said i said, on let me play and you, you hit the wah for me <laughs> okay oh geez okay I so he I, was I he so. was the guy doing he was running the Wawa pedal. Yeah, I th I'm pretty sure I was playing and I and, and I'm like, hey man, you hit the Wawa and I'll and I'll play the solo. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. But I imagine you guys thought enough of that tune to kind of go, hey, it needs another shot and a little bit of reworking. No, it was completely unintentional. Like if that's how okay. it came. is okay. it similar. It's pretty I, similar. I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, I'm guessing you've done so much stuff you can't even remember at this point. But yeah, I mean, I think the the fans pick up on this stuff, you know, because because we're geeks. <laughs> I don't even remember, you know, the Sunset Superstar thing, I just was probably something we just was a bonus track. Mm -hmm. Correct. For was, European market, I think. Yeah. Super fast. I, I don't yeah. have much of a of it, to be honest. Right. Right. I got a couple more things and then I'll cut you loose. Thank you for your time. I mean, uh, so one of the things that that we ask folks here, and I think you alluded to that earlier, you know, because this is uh, we go to 11. It's got a little bit of a spinal tap thing to it. Any 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 uh, spinal tap moment that you'd like to share that you experienced at any given point in your life? I know you, you alluded earlier about almost missing a gig at Don's Club. Oh, yeah. You want that story? Yeah, this or hundred, any story, uh, anything that comes to mind. Twenty-year giant spinal tap moment. Frankly, yeah. you know this. Yeah, the amount of things that have happened in this are unbelievable. But uh, the missing the gig, um, Don called me. You know, he said, "Yeah, let's. We're going to play for my birthday. I own a club in Redondo Beach. I I don't know if you know Los Angeles, but I live. Yeah. No, I don't live in Redondo Beach. And it's okay. if you don't live down there, right? You're very confused. Sure. You know, remember." They didn't have the navigation phones like we do today. And mm -hmm. he gave quick directions. He said, oh, it's super easy to get there. Just turn here and turn on our feet. I, I wrote it down fast and, and I'm shy a little bit. And I was, you didn't want to say, wait, slow down. Give it to me again. You know, I don't know. Right. So, you know, I drove down there with my girlfriend, Kim, at the time. And he, I thought he said the Redondo Beach Steakhouse. Oh. Right. So yeah. I'm, look, I'm looking around for the Redondo Beach Steakhouse and pulling at the gas stations because that's sure. what you did. Right. And we're, yeah, we're, yeah. We're gas. And finally, after an hour, hour and a half, I'm like, Kim, let's just go home. I can't find it. Forget it. Had I missed that gig, I would have been out of the band, I'm sure. Or never would have been a consideration yeah. later, you know. No and sure enough, Kim's like, hey, what's all those people doing in that parking lot? Wait a second. Is the is it the Redondo Beach steak, steak out? 
I'm like, oh, that must be it. There you go. Oh, so, geez. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Last question. And you may or may not be able to come up with one. I don't know. Maybe you've heard one. What What's the funniest lawyer joke you've ever heard? Lawyer joke? Yeah. Oh, I don't know, man. <laughs> Do we? I don't know. I, I just thought I'd throw that out. I don't know. Sometimes people have good lawyer jokes. I, I, I don't know if you do or don't, but I thought I'd throw that out as a last thing. Name of your law firm, do we cheat him and how? <laughs> oh, there you go. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, John, That's thanks cool. for your time, man. It, it was fun. Right on. You got it, man. All right. We'll take, take care. care. You, you too. See we'll ya. see you.